Welcome to Ignani.com. C Programming, Chapter 3. Your First C Program. The only way to learn any programming language is by writing programs. Now that you have some knowledge about the variables, constants and keywords, let us write a small program in C. You might not understand everything at this point, but don't worry. Once we are done, I will explain the program in detail and also clarify any questions that arise. If you have any questions, visit our site and post them in our questions section. I will be happy to answer them for you. Before you begin with your first C program, I would want you to remind certain rules that are applicable to all C programs. Each instruction in a C program is written as a separate statement, and each C statement ends with a semicolon. A complete C program would comprise of a series of statements with semicolon acting as a statement terminator. The statements or instructions are executed in an order, unless we jump the order or transfer the control out of program through some program logic. Hence all these statements or instructions, should be in the same order as we wish them to be executed. C is a case sensitive programming language. In other words, C compiler treats the uppercase and lowercase alphabets as different. It's better to follow a pattern in writing your code, to avoid any errors that may arise of case sensitivity. Blank spaces are good to be inserted between words, but spaces are not allowed within variable, constant or keywords. C is a free form language. It has no rules to specify where each statement has to be written. You can write the entire program in the same line or on different lines. We assume that you have access to a computer, with C compiler in it. For this tutorial, I will be using C Free IDE. C Free is a professional C and C integrated development environment that support multi compilers. With this software, user can edit, build, run, and debug programs freely. Although C Free is a lightweight C and C development tool, it has powerful features to let you make use of it in your project. Go to the site www.programarts.com and download it. While the standard version is free, the professional version is a paid one. However, you are free to use whatever editor you are comfortable in. Once you download and install, open the C Free IDE. Before going any further, it's better to make one change. From the Tools menu, select Environment Options. On the General tab, for the new file type, change the value from CPP to C. Since we will be working on C programs, this makes all the new files to be of .c extension. Let us now write a simple program which displays a message. Start C free and from the file menu, select new. Or the new file icon on the toolbar. This will open a blank file. Let me copy the code instead of typing. The code is available on our site if you require in the attached source code for this chapter named 003 underscore 01.c. Now that there is some code, let us build and execute it and see the result. C Free does all the job for us. To build and execute your code, all you need to do is either click on the run button on the toolbar, or from the build menu, select run. The shortcut key is F5. Congratulations! You successfully created compiled and executed your first C program. While all this was pretty simple and easy, a lot of things have taken place for you to see the above output. C Free has done all the work for you and that is why I selected it, instead of going with the old method of compiling manually. At the bottom, you can see the build pane displaying some data related to build process. The first line gives a warning. Don't worry for now regarding warning. Even if you have warnings, your code builds. Then some linking is going on. Finally you have the completion message with zero errors and one warning. The last line gives the path to the executable that was built. Let me save the file in a proper location. 
I have a file already saved in the chapter and sample number convention that I follow. I will replace that file. As I promised earlier, let me take you through the code and explain it to you in detail. Comments The first line contains a comment. Notice that this line starts with a slash and an asterisk, and ends with an asterisk and a slash. In C, slash and an asterisk is the opening comment mark, and an asterisk and a slash is the closing comment mark. The C compiler ignores everything that is between the, the opening and closing comment marks. A comment can be split over more than one line. So, in our code the first line doesn't have any impact on the program. Though the comments are not necessary, it's a good practice to comment your code. The only purpose of including comments in your C program is to help you document your code, or specific sections of it. It is there to help others understand your code, or to help yourself if you happen to visit it after a long period of time. Any number of comments can be written at any place in the program. It can be written before a statement, after a statement, or even within the statement. Let us run this code. As you can see, it shows the message successfully. Even the build pane doesn't show any errors. Sometimes, it will not be so easy to understand what the code does, in such cases, it is worthwhile mentioning the purpose of the statements as a comment. It has become a de facto standard in programming to comment code. If you are a part of a large team working on a big project, well commented code is almost a requirement and is very important for other team members to understand the code. An adequate number of comments in your code, can save hours of effort required to understand the code, when you or someone would want to understand what it does after a period of time. Comments cannot be nested. That is you cannot have a comment within a comment. You need not worry about the size or performance of your C program when you add a lot of comments. Although the size of the source code may increase, the final executable code will be the same with, or without comments. Hash include directive. The second line in the code starts with a pound sign, which is followed by the word, include. The hash include in C forms a preprocessor directive. A preprocessor is a program that processes our source program before it is passed to the compiler. Preprocessor commands, also known as directives are programs that virtually all C programmers rely on, even without knowing anything about them. Also notice that the hash include, is followed by the words, stdio.h, surrounded by a lesser than, and greater than signs. stdio.h, is a file name. The hash include preprocessor directive, tells the C preprocessor to look for a file, and place the contents of the file in the location where the hash include directive is in the code. In this case, the contents of the file stdio.h, is what it asks for. The name stdio.h stands for, standard input output header file. It contains a large collection of programs, to perform input or output functions for C programs. I will cover the preprocessor directives in detail later on in this tutorial. Header files The .h in the word stdio.h refers to the header extension. The files that are required by the hash include directives are called header files. Besides stdio.h, there are a lot of header files. I will cover them as and when we use them. Angle brackets and double quotes. If you look at the second line of the code, the header file name stdio.h is covered by less than and greater than symbols, also known as angle brackets. In C, the angle brackets tell the C preprocessor to look for a header file in a folder rather than the folder in which the current file is saved. For example, our code was saved in a file named 003 underscore 01.c and is saved in the folder, chap 003. The angle brackets tell the C preprocessor, 
to look for header file named stdio.h in a folder other than chap 003. The double quotes work a bit different when used with the hash include directive. If you use the double quotes in place of angle brackets around the stdio.h file name, it will tell the C preprocessor to first look in the current directory and then to look elsewhere, only if it's not found in the current directory. Usually, the header files are stored in a subfolder named include in the folder where the compiler files are stored. Main function While the third line is empty in the code, it's only left blank to make the program more readable. It doesn't make any difference to the compiler. The fourth line contains the word main, followed by a pair of open and closing parentheses. Main is a very special function in C. For now, you can think of a function as a set of statements, grouped together by enclosing them within a pair of open and closing braces, and given a name to access them as required. Every function has a pair of parentheses associated with it. Though a function can have any name, in our case, the name has to be main, and nothing else. Every C program must have a main function and can have only one main function. A main function can be placed anywhere you want to in your C program. However, irrespective of its position, the execution of your program always starts with the main function. You can think of the main as the entry point to your code. In our sample program, the main function starts on line 4 and ends on line 8. Since it is a very simple program, the main function is the only function that is defined in the program. Inside the main function, a C library function named printf is used. Unlike other languages, C doesn't have any instruction to display output on the screen. All output to screen are achieved using ready-made C library functions. One such function is printf, which we have called in our sample program in order to print our message. Printf instructs the computer to print on the screen the string of characters between the double quotes. In programming terms, a string is also referred to as character string, a message or a literal. The entire line, including printf, its argument, which is the code within the parentheses, and the semicolon at the end of the line, is known as a statement. As I mentioned earlier, every statement must end with a semicolon which is the statement terminator in C language. I will cover the printf and also about functions in general, in detail later on in this tutorial. When the printf statement is executed, it prints the message Hello C World. This is my first C program. Every C program, not only starts with the main function, but the execution also ends with main. A program ends when all the statements within the main function have been executed, or when the program reaches the closing brace through any logical means. New Line Character If you notice the message in the printf function, and compare it with the output, everything within the parentheses is displayed, except for backslash n, which is the new line character. It tells the computer, to generate a carriage return and line feed sequence, so that anything printed out after the message will start on the next new line on the screen. The backslash is known as a escape character, which tells the computer that a special character follows. When the backslash is encountered, the compiler looks at the next character, and it combines it with the backslash in the string, to form the escape sequence. Backslash n is replaced by a carriage return and line feed sequence, which causes the cursor to move to the beginning of the next line on the screen. There are a few more escape characters which I will cover later on in this tutorial. Let me remove the escape sequence and show you the output. Notice the words press any key to continue, appears on the same line as our message. Let me add backslash n twice after our message. After our message there is a blank line and then the next set of words appear. Hope this gave you a clear picture of the usability of backslash n. Return statement.
The return keyword is one of the various options that we have in C to exit a function. In our sample program, we just have the return keyword. By default, the main function returns an integer. In C, integers are decimal numbers without fraction portions. Let me add a zero after the return keyword, by which we are asking the function to return a zero from the main function. The zero after the return keyword indicates that the program has terminated successfully. On some compilers it's fine to just use the word return without the zero following it. I will cover the return statement in detail, later on in this tutorial while covering functions. The right brace, also known as closing brace, indicates that the end of the main function has been reached. In the next chapter, I will explain the steps that takes place in the background when we compile and execute the code. You can find a lot of free video tutorials, training materials, how to videos, and much much more at our site www.ignani.com. Post all your questions at our site. We will be happy to help you. We want your learning process to be as interactive as possible. Feel free to contact us.